Nature. Nature is the world's greatest innovator. I'm going to show you why. This is an innovation process which nature has itself, it may not be aware of it, it having itself, but if you actually go into harness innovation for business, you're going to want to actually follow some sort of structure, even if it's a loose structure. If you're actually going to achieve what you really want, I suggest you kind of take a, take a leaf out of nature's book. A uh, leaf wasn't meant to be a pun, though, but it was, maybe I should, should have done that. But. <laughs> so first off, extinction in nature. It's always changing. Things are going to actually keep up, otherwise they're going to die out. So there's, there's always competition going on. There's always environmental changes going on. And you can always get catastrophes. So what you've got to ask is, what, what's happening in the marketplace? What's happening in the competitive world? What's, what's happening financially? What is there that I need to be aware of? What, Terry Terry said earlier, what information do I need to get to actually understand what I'm trying to do here? So it's all about defining your challenge. Being able to actually understand where you need to go, what the forces are, and how you are going to react if there is a catastrophe or if there is something which you, you need to respond to quickly. The banks being a, a good example, big collapse because they, they put a lot of risk involved into their business and they just didn't have a fallback. So, first step, extinction. Second step, mutation. So what nature does very well it just comes up with ideas. It mutates. It just comes up with lots of different variations. But the great thing about it is it doesn't care. No one's saying to nature, oh, I don't think that's not going to work, so um, don't try it. Nature just gets some of it. It's not judging its own creations. So it's just random. It's chance. It's experimenting. It's actually allowing a bit of a novelty come, to come through. It doesn't have to be big changes. Actually, uh, the, the photo here is... Is, you, you might recognize it, it's me on a bad day. No, it's uh, bird flu. Bird flu actually is a, mutated very quickly, so it's spread from birds to humans. So it can just be those very little changes which allow you to exploit new markets. Uh, and nature doesn't care about silly ideas. Nature doesn't care about making mistakes. And nature has all sorts of oddities that it's had in the, in the, in the past, uh, but some, some of nature's um, quirks can actually turn out to be quite successful, as, as we've seen, again, a football reference. Then what nature does, it, it's had no judgment at this process. Now it's on to selection, so it's survival of the fittest. Where are the advantages? Where, where are people able to compete? What potential is there out there? So, it now looks at, uh, but using a uh, giraffe sip, it's actually looking at what the selective advantages they have. But potential as well. It's not all about what is great right here and now. It's about what could be used, what actually can develop from that advantage right now. It's, I'm going to give you a little, here's a little task for us. I've got a new invention here. It's a silent alarm clock. Okay, I would like your thoughts on my new invention, please. Any any ideas? What you think of my silent alarm clock? Would, would you use it? You wouldn't use my silent alarm clock. Oh. Could it? Right. Let me ask a different question. How else could you use a silent alarm clock? What what way? In what way could you use a silent alarm clock? Where would purpose be? What could you make a silent alarm clock do? What's the function of a alarm clock? Wake you up. Wake you up. <laughs> so, how else could alarm wake you up? What else could wake you up? How else can you wake you up? I heard something. Vibration. Vibration. So, instead of noise, it could be a vibration. Any other ideas? Sounds weird, but you can, um, if you have a way, you can ha attach a device to the alarm clock into your body somehow so that when uh, time reaches, gives you like a little, let's say electricity, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> a little shock. So, so you can touch, you can give you electric shock. Sure. You can kind of get a big comedy hammer and whack you on the head. With it. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about light? Waking up naturally, you do get alarm clocks now, which blow like sun, wake you up quite naturally. It's, um, 
So what we've done is we've taken the, which is seemingly a silly idea, right? We do it in <laughs> but we've turned it into something which works. So we've taken the function and we've redeveloped it. We've asked how else, we've asked what else, and we've been able to innovate from it. And that's really important. And finally, reproduction. You could have the best idea in the world, but unless, unless someone wants it, it's not going to work. So it has to be desirable. It has to fit in with the status quo. It has to be what your community want, whether that's your marketplace, whether that's the culture in your company, or the company you're trying to actually work with. Sometimes, actually, you've got to have compromise. You've got to have these trade-offs. And a lot of it is about actually getting the right mix, getting the right value. Here's a peacock. Peacocks have to go to a stupid amount of energy and time to grow this great big tail. It is, it's just it's a bit of a disadvantage for them because they've got to put all their food, they've got to grow this, they've got to maintain it to attract mates. But they need it because that's, what they, that's how they work, that's how they attract their mates. It's actually called the peacock paradox. But there are, this is what we find in innovation, in business. We need to actually make these trade-offs. We need to find where the value is. So that's, that's an innovation process which you can actually you can start to emulate for yourselves. But I'm going to tell you now how to beat nature. Because we, we, have a, we have a mind, we can think for ourselves. I'm going to introduce the concept of, des uh, of design thinking to you. What a lot of people do when they're, they're trying to get new business or they're, they're looking at innovation is they look somewhere else and they try and copy it. That's not design, that's just emulating. It's not really actually adding any value. What true design is, is it's looking for value. What do people want? What, how to make this actually better, not just doing something the same way and repeating it? What are the actually needs? What are the needs of the people who are going to be wanting this innovation? What can we actually improve from what is there current? What can we improve in something which has always uh, already been there? And what flaws are there that we can actually start to identify and start to improve? So a good design thinker will have uh, a sense of empathy. So like Sean said, putting your mind into someone else's. Can you understand their problems? Can you understand their needs? Optimism. You've got to be positive. This is design. It's not problem solving. You can actually, you're going to, whatever you do, you're going to create something. And just be optimistic that you can do it. It's not innovation, it's not a scary word. Experimentism. Give it a go. Just come up with lots of things, see what you can achieve. Collaboration. Uh, we've already talked about this big one. Actually, getting, getting other people involved. You don't have all the answers. Who can actually help you? What, are there any other fields that can help you to actually? put your products out there or your service to innovate. Determination. You've got to believe it. If you're going to get there, you've got to have that self-confidence, that self-determination, and you will get there. And lastly, emotion. Put some passion into it. The most successful businesses, the most successful innovators have that passion. They have that belief. I'll give you a few examples. The iPod. iPod was not the first MP3 player. But it was the first to actually get people to think emotionally about it, to actually feel it, and to actually feel, oh, this is a great product. Dyson vacuum cleaner. Who, who really wanted to have a, have a hoover as a showpiece before the Dyson came on? But now everyone gets it, everyone loves it. It's because it actually is friendly, it's fun, they're putting the actually human needs, the value, back into it. eBay wasn't the first online auction site. But they found a way to get people engaged with it, to get people interacting with it, put the emotion back into it. So emotion is so critical to actually innovation and, and good design. So where do ideas come from? You've got the mindset. So we've already talked about this. You know, you've got this design thinking mindset. Necessity. We've all heard the term necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, it's very true. If you really, if you're up against it, you will come up with something. There's also something called Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law. I mean, I'm sure you're all familiar. Are there any students here? Yeah. Okay. So, have you? What's some honesty? Who here has had to pull an all-nighter to get their project work in the next day? <laughs> and okay. And did, was it good? Did you get good marks? Did, it, did you go right? Did you yeah. manage to put it off? Yeah. Yeah. That's, Parkin, that's Parkinson's law. <laughs> Basically, it says work expands to fill, fill the time available. So if, actually, if you start feeling the pressure, if you put yourself up against it, 
you will start to innovate, you will actually start to have these ideas. Rather than just sit back and think, yeah, easy, I'll, I'll do that in a while, ideas will come to me. It, it just doesn't happen like that. So remember, chaos is sometimes good, a bit of pressure is sometimes good. So if, if necessity is the mother of invention, play is the dad, right? Play is about having fun. You, you, when do you have the most ideas? When you sat down being serious? Or when you're actually enjoying yourself, laughing, actually getting, getting involved with other people? For me, I have, I have my best ideas when I'm out running. I kind of, I just, my mind is empty. And what, what happens is everything percolates down, from, as I'm sure I said about your subconscious. It kind of all comes through. So I'm probably one of the only people whose intellect is actually directly related to my waist size. But um, just, just hang up, sit and see some looks. Don't judge. So that's play. And lastly, techniques. So it's largely about attitude. You've got to have that right mental attitude. You've got to have that, that process and that design thing. But there are some techniques you can use to actually speed things along a bit. And we're just going to go through one activity now to get us thinking in a different ways. So, uh, this is something also inspired by nature. It's random. So I'm going to pose a challenge for us. And our challenge is going to be redesigning the human body. So if our challenge is trying to make the human body better. And here I've got, I've got a bag of tricks. <laughs> so if you can all get into pairs, just pick in, grab something out. <laughs> okay, so the object oh, is to use ones. what you've got in your hand <laughs> and <laughs> explore what its, what its features are, what its benefits are, what, what, can, you, what can you associate with that object <coughs> with how to improve the human body. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there, there, there's, there's, a good, there's a good starter for us. <laughs> humans, <laughs> Humans often have trouble communicating. We never see cows having that problem. Maybe we should have more sort of ritualistic calling routines. <laughs> so, in, in your pairs or your threes, just get together, take one of your objects, and just explore how that object can help you <laughs> with, a, with a part of the human body of your choice. Go on, five minutes, two minutes. So, what's the question again? How how can you right, how can you use that ball yeah. to help you improve the human body? What, what is it? What's its function? It's a ball. Okay, and what are you doing right now? Stress relief. Stress relief. So what is there in the human body that that might be beneficial for? Heart. Uh, blood pressure. Yeah. So a heart which actually copes with more stress. That has better valve systems that can actually clear the, clear the arteries perhaps. See, so what we're doing, we're finding, we're finding functions and benefits and then we're just decide, seeing how we... So we've already had a couple of ideas, actually how to improve the human body. By the way, we're not, we're not looking for ideas we're going to go away and do. I'm not going to take this down to the, I'm not going to take you down to the hospital and say, right, let's, let's tinker with the heart. What we can do here is we're having fun. So we, there's no judgment here. We can be free to come up with whatever we want. And I'm not going to judge you, and you're not going to judge each other. So let's have two minutes. I'll come around and help. Let's see. I want to have some ideas at the end. So we want some... I, I want some stupid ideas as well, please. All right? <laughs> All right, let's come on. Let's hear some... Let's hear some ideas. Come shout them out. Oh, we've got one. Go on. Yeah. Go on. Okay. We, um, we put a consistent sleep outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're thinking like it's twofold, really. We're, we're thinking about how you can also create something that's comfortable. Yeah. Because obviously, when you're younger, you can feet walking stones and all that, it's quite uncomfortable. But then we also thought, well, what if we were to, like, Maybe add like a gyro to it or something, so the energy you exert through your feet, you sort of recycle back into your body, and it's less effort. Yeah. Brilliant. So we're regenerative, yeah. <laughs> 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 but we can put it back in. Yeah. 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 Right, come let's have some more. Are you guys very deep? Yeah, really. You're very deep. Come on, shout out. Oh, basically, this is a camera. I'm using to take pictures. 
and it's been easy to take pictures. I'm um, like, you, you can take picture today, and in the next two years, or in the next couple of years, you can that to see yourself. Oh, how can I use that to improve myself? How can I use that to be? If your head is too big and you want to do it, you want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of a bit like this time-lapse camera of how, how you're kind of getting on the surface yeah, so you can actually see where you're going wrong. Might be for diet, might be for diet, in health and fitness. Yeah, exactly. That, that, um, that might work actually because I've had that camera since I was about 15. And I still haven't had it. <laughs> actually, I want to, is there a film here? Take a picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't need to. Wind it on, wait. <laughs> Right, come on, let's have one more. Anyone over here? Well, this is quite, uh, this is about fighting, so it's breaking, so maybe having the bone, having the body less brittle, more bouncy. Cool, so we've got very brittle bones, we break very easily, but we could have, maybe if we're flying around <laughs> as well, maybe, we could quite, maybe we're paving the way forward for actual human helicopter <laughs> travel. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so oh, anyone last yeah, anyone wants to have bones. their last one idea before we wrap up? Stage control, movement control. So I've got a girlfriend control over here. <laughs> 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 Alright, so that's that's one technique. And what we've done is we've actually had to break away from how would if I just asked you to redesign the human body, you'd probably start going through a what have oh, eyes, got legs. But what we've done is we've taken it from outside our frame of reference. We've had to make completely new connections. And that's where ideas come from. So we're not trying to great, get everything right first time. But there are ones which sow those seeds and you can then develop. You can then take the functions, so those concepts, and actually make them into great ideas, which we're all going to run off down to the patent office. <laughs> I'm getting there first. So that's... Um, that's Innovation, that's how nature does it, and that's how you can actually use it in nature, nature's way, to your own advantage. We're going to do a little task in a little while, but just sum up. Innovation, second nature. Thank you very much.